I'm Johnny Kaplan, and you're watching The Tech Talk Show. Also called weed, dope, ganja, skunk, or marijuana, cannabis has been a taboo subject for decades now, largely due to political, economic, and racial issues. While the taboo is quickly fading, with many countries now legalizing medical and recreational use in a number of different forms. Ancient cultures used to use it as a herbal medicine, and history of US cultivation dates back to the early colonists who grew hemp for use in textiles. Even Queen Victoria herself was known to use cannabis for therapeutic needs. Well, due to recent medical data to prove that many of the 113 different cannabinoids found in the cannabis plant have huge medical benefits and in return have a fraction of the negative side effects associated with prescription medicine. Cannabis has quickly propelled forwards into a thriving new industry, offering a wealth of opportunities, hope and new fortune. Traditionally, cannabis industry events are focused on the recreational side and offer more getting high opportunities than real commercial business ventures. Well, as the medical side was proving all the data, we searched for the source, as this was really going to stand the test of time. The Canatech Medical Cannabis Innovation Summit now in its fourth year, is as serious as it gets. A medical cannabis event where technology meets science. Attendees flock from 40 countries worldwide, including the pharmaceutical, medical, academic, banking, and agricultural sectors, amongst others. Doctors, scientists, academics, patients, investors, entrepreneurs, all in one place. Such an interesting event loaded with innovative companies and experts to meet and hear from. We spent two days here to meet with some of the key players. Let's take a look around. Hi Mayan. Hi, welcome to our booth. Thank you, lovely to be here. So, I know a lot about Tikkun Olam already, but please tell for our viewers a little bit about Tikkun Olam. Well, Tikkun Olam is the first and leading company in Israel and globally. We breed our own strains, we cultivate them, we then manufacture our products, right. we deliver them to our dispensary or directly to our patients, and we have a leading, I think it's the only nurses clinic in the world where we provide personalized treatment to patients, and we're very proud of this achievement because our nurses and our pediatric nurses can provide one-on-one -on -one informative and educational consulting mm -hmm. and it's very uh, imperative in, um, in the treatment of medical cannabis to find the right strain and the right dose uh, to set goals and to uh, meet those goals at the end of the treatment. Israel is one of the leaders in cannabis research and they've certainly got the, the, the biggest amount of data on the subject from actually testing with real humans and, and real patients and you guys are, are one of the leaders in that area and making a lot of headway here in Israel and internationally. We have the largest accumulated patient data in the world and from this data we can derive a lot of information and decide what clinical trials we want to conduct. And I think this is essential in the awareness and advocacy for medical cannabis use in Israel, but globally as well. We're very proud of that, and we're seeing incredible results. And I have to say that, you know, there's a lot of criticism about the Israeli government, maybe about exporting and so on, but they have allowed us to conduct clinical trials from the beginning. And this is almost a decade of our clinical research, so we're very proud of that. The idea is to publish this work, and then, you know, physicians can change their idea and the way that they perceive medical cannabis use. And we hope that we're providing enough tools to change you know, the image and the stigma that they have because we know that it, it works. We see it in our clinic, we see it every day, and we think that um, you know, more patients should have access to this treatment. I think it's all data, 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 and effectively when you flourish them with so much data, there's not going to be much that they can do with it. You know, you can't argue with statistics, you can't argue with facts, and yeah. I think that's really about the, the great work that you're doing. So what's, what's the idea about today? I mean, a lot of people know about Tick and Alarm. Are you still spreading the word, or is it making partnerships today? Well, we are. Um, we're, we're here to, you know, show as well uh, who we are, and obviously we're very fond of uh, ICANN and Canatech 
and we've been involved from the beginning. So I think it's a wonderful platform to get kind of the world awareness. Tikkun Olam is actually a global company because we have already established a, a partnership in Canada with mm -hmm. MedRelief, mm -hmm. and they're worth almost two billion. Wow. Um, and they're providing some of our proprietary strains and knowledge. Uh, in the US, we're going state by state. Uh, so we have a collaboration called Tikkun USA. Our latest one was in Australia, far away. Um, but we feel that it's, you know, our shlichut, it's our, uh, it's our mission, first of all, uh, to spread, you know, Israeli technology mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. share the tikkun olam concept. And tikkun olam means, you know, trying to repair and heal the world. You took the words out of my mouth because my next sentence was going to be say <laughs> that tikkun olam actually means in Hebrew that you should repair and fix the world. So Tzachi Cohen is the founder of Tikkun Olam and he comes from a small village and his whole family are part of this business and they invested their lives. And yeah, I actually met him eight years ago and I started as a volunteer uh, because I heard that there was this one crazy guy helping uh, because I heard and his mother was growing the plants in her house and you know, he was providing it in his house and we were consulting patients and it was all very initial. And then suddenly in 2010, the regulation chain, there was a set price and more companies. So, you know, I think, I think we all have to be thankful for his vision because he, you know, he saw what was gonna become of this industry already in the beginning. Absolutely. And I think we all have to be more compassionate to patients around the world and in Israel. This show yields a very high level of attendees from all corners of the globe. Even US TV personality Montel Williams was here, who's also an entrepreneur, a multiple sclerosis sufferer, and a medical cannabis activist. How are you? Good. Lovely to see you here. So, Good to be here. so tell us a little bit about you know what you're doing here at the show at Canatech and, and what piques your interest and well I think a lot of people may know or may not know, I've been involved in cannabis long before this became a gold rush. Right. I've been involved in this since really 2000. Okay. Back in the United States, I've been literally either a help to write, help to facilitate, help to lobby for bills that have passed in over 21 of the 31 states. Wow. I'm currently working in five states and two other countries on legislation to ensure that patients have proper access to full medication. Cannabis is one of them. Oh, amazing. So, I mean, you really have a lot of foresight there seeing the industry many years before for, for others that and seeing the, the properties of, of cannabinoids. And well, so. I think a lot of people know mine, like yours, is a personal journey. I have MS. I have uh, intractable primary progressive MS that I've dealt with for now 17 years. Wow. One of my weapons in my arsenal against my disease is cannabis, and it will always be. I've been a daily cannabinoid user for 17 years, and I will be until the day I drop or until they come up with something that can at least match the same medical efficacy. Until they do that, I'll be on cannabis. Well, I did start my own full spectrum cannabinoid company in California, I'm right now in five states, right. and uh, hopefully within the next three months I'll be international. Because I'm making some deals internationally that allow us to distribute internationally. So it's part of the reason today is really researching what's going on in the industry, seeing what other people are doing, the technology, the advancements, and so on. Absolutely, and I'm also here to share a story. You know, I mean, a lot of times you go to a lot of these conferences and you're going to get filled with technical information, and everybody's going to sit there and bombard you with this stat, that stat, this stat, that stat. At the end of the day, this industry and this conference wouldn't be here if it wasn't for about five or ten patients who were laying on beds in California and got dragged out of their room because the police thought just using cannabis was so outrageously ridiculous so sad, yeah. that they had to lock them up. So now we have an industry, but an industry that's really jumping at the opportunity to get involved, not just the medical, but they want recreational worldwide. Sure. And that's an industry that's looking to make a lot of money. And I just want to make sure that we remind them as they do so that it all started with patience. So let's keep patience in mind. Well, that's what's really nice about this event, as you can see. It's a very serious event. There's no uh, dabbing or vaping going on in the corners. People are here to talk about medical properties, right. the developments, technology, the industry, where it's feeling the economy, legalization, and so right. on. So, so it's, it's very serious here. And we like the caliber of this event because of that. I love the caliber of this event. I've been to several events in the last year and two years all over the country. Some of them don't even come close to this with professionalism and the fact that they put patients first. Yeah. So I'm glad that this conference has put patients first, and that's why I'm here. Fantastic. Well, it's very nice to Hello. see you. Best of luck. Thank and, you so uh, much. Enjoy the rest of the event. I will for sure. You too.
Some of the companies here have brought brand new and revolutionary technology products that have been built and designed specifically for this market. Tell us a little bit about your, your wonderful products. Okay, well, we've developed the world's first uh, device for testing cannabis composition and potency and doing so in a totally non-destructive manner. It's easy to use, there's no sample preparation involved. You get reliable results on time, on the spot. And most important, you can reuse the sample for whatever your intended use. So basically, if you're buying, if you're selling, or if you're using cannabis with the GemaCert device, you know exactly what you're holding in your hand. No solvents, no hazardous waste, no touching of the sample, which means that you can test exactly what you're gonna uh, buy, sell, or use. How do you put the oil material in there? That's the, the, oil, the oil, there's a special capsule we have. It's right. an, it comes along, right. and in the capsule you put a, a sample of the oil, and then it, again it goes down. So you can connect and operate it from your desktop if you want, but the default uh, operation of the device is from a smartphone app, and the communication is Bluetooth. Right, okay. We told the designers that we wanted something that would, on purpose, not look like your typical laboratory analytical device. Um, to tell a different story, and this is the result. It's a lovely looking product. What, what price point is it? Right now, for early adopters, we are offering the product at a $2,500 deal um, with a down payment of $250 and first shipment starting in uh, June. Um, the regular price on the market afterward will be uh, $3,999 per device. Okay. And there's a paper use fees afterwards for testing depending on the volumes that you commit to. Keep up the good work. We'll Thank certainly you. be following your progress and see how you're getting on. While some entrepreneurs are just starting out in the cannabis space, others have been established for longer and already producing serious data. Canadian firms have had longer to benefit from favorable legislation. We do a couple things. We build software for the cannabis industry. It's the kind of things you'd see in doctor's clinics or tracking data to determine the efficacy of products for symptoms. And the other thing is we use this data and we, we come up with quantitative evidence to help prove what works, what doesn't, uh, whether someone can reduce opiates and replace it with cannabis. Our sister company is Marijuana for Trauma and we own clinics all across Canada. We have 6% of the patients in Canada come to our clinics everything from cancer, MS, PTSD. And we found our doctors in the beginning, and doctors everywhere we go in the US are saying, try this strain, I heard it works. I'm glad I don't have detrimental six months to live cancer or something serious, because I don't want to hear, I heard it works. So we collect the evidence, and it fills, goes right back to our clinics, where they're able to actually give quantitative-based evidence instead of anecdotal. In the beginning, as an example, we started tracking our PTSD, our veterans. They all suffer from nightmares, so they relive the traumatic events they're exhausted, they don't get any sleep, all the other symptoms are worse, they fight with their spouse. And anecdotally, they've learned that smoking a pink kush helps them sleep better. There's some science behind it and that helps turn off the REM cycle, so they dream less. So we started tracking them. We had built an app, a free app, Analysis Wellness Tracker, and we started watching them, putting their symptoms, their moods, and over the course of a couple months, it was quickly evident that there's one strain better than the rest in Canada. It's from a company called MedRelief, called Sediment. And every veteran now knows it. And this is the difference between anecdotal and quantitative based evidence. We built the first software base about four years ago. Since then we keep adding to the technology and we get into data collection probably about two or three years ago. So now we're to the point where we're able to produce industry reports and actually we have results that we can actually share beyond just our own doctors. Do you have a sizable quantity of data already? We do. Oh, I think in Canada alone we have over 30 million points of data. Wow. We have 6% of the patient base covering almost four years. So as our uh, CTO likes to say, statistically significant amount of people. Fantastic. And now we're in the US as well, so we're in four or five states and collecting data there now. With the cannabis industry still in its infancy, success has only been possible with the financial support of some with the right foresight. Hi David, you, lovely to see you. You guys are really sponsoring the event. I mean, every single name tag today has got Tress Capital plastered all over it. Sure. Tell us a little bit about what you do at Tress. Very simply, we are an investment management firm, really, specifically for the cannabis industry. It's interesting to note that the majority of companies in our portfolio company are actually the leading 100 companies in the cannabis space overall. Okay. Uh, those include companies in the software uh, sector like Baker and Headset, uh, in the analytical lab testing sector, SC Labs. 
media, cannabis now, and so forth. What are your investment criteria? You look for early stage uh, investments. Uh... I would say about roughly 20% would be reserved for early stage, and then 80% or our lion's share is there for Series A growth capital. You've already proven your service or your product or your concept, and now Trust will come in and really help you scale that service or that product. Three to five years ago, we were the ones making the phone calls. We were the ones seeking them. Now, we're the ones receiving phone calls almost on a daily basis, getting phone calls, emails from experts in outside sectors looking to bring their knowledge to the cannabis industry and then relying on trust to sort of bring them in a much that quicker, bridge. to bridge that gap, right, but to, to, to provide that access to the heart of the industry. What is it that you're looking for the event from today and tomorrow? I'm a judge sitting at the pitch slam. So what we're looking for, uh, we're looking for innovators, we're looking for companies that really have that ripple effect, similar to a Waze, right? Where it, it is impactful. Everybody's not only looking the for a Waze investment. Everybody. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. No. <laughs> exactly. We're finding investments like this in our industry now. Fantastic. Well, it's a fantastic time for you to be in, in, in the place that you are. You had a lot of foresight from getting on there in the, into the industry early. And as we just discussed, there's a huge way to go for the industry. It's very much in its infancy. Not only that, we're able to now help curate where the industry is going. And to be able to provide support for those leaders today, I think is is tremendous. Priceless, absolutely. It's almost like the days when the prohibition had been lifted for the alcohol and then, you know, the distilleries started building businesses and now they're multi-billion dollar businesses. So, we wish you the very best of luck. We see Cannabo research all over the, uh, the media at the moment. You've done a wonderful deal with the Israel Health Ministry. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Cannabo and how you guys got here. We'd love to hear the story. So we had this idea that the recreational world in the west coast of the United States is amazing products. A lot of innovation and knowledge. But general physicians are looking down on recreational markets, looking down on any cannabis that is not validated, that is not clinical tested. How can we take knowledge and know-how from the world of the recreational cannabis, of medical cannabis, into the world of pharmaceutical. And that's the core of the business. We're uh, taking the fastest growing segment in the industry, vaporization of uh, extract and oils, and medicalizing it, bringing it to Israel, doing clinical trials, validating it, adding features like meter dosing, and basically starting to educate, not the patients, not the users who are really happy, but the physicians the medical community. So our vision is to become a drug device company. Having a device to certify it right now only in Israel as a medical device, hopefully in Europe and Canada, and in the end of the day an FDA approved vaporizer. And at the same time have the formulations that are for a specific indication. So when you're taking a heart rate that is meant to be uh, for insomnia, you understand that it's always the same, that it was tested, and that it's doing what it's supposed to do. You know that you need three inhalations to a dose to have your relief. You wanted the THC level to be in a certain level, always in the same. This is the vape pod uh, product that we were looking at before. Uh, wonderful design as well. I mean, the, the magnetic pull on this vape pod is, is very clean. It almost looks like a, a product designed by Apple, which is a, it's a compliment because uh, yeah. they undergo a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of expense to make sure they are. I know that you're now doing some uh, clinical trials with the Israeli Health Ministry, which is a, a huge leap forward. Uh, certainly, I, you know, I know for, in this country there's a lot of bureaucracy, and sometimes it's difficult to get large institutions to uh, to change their processes or or to move into new areas so it's certainly a huge leap forwards for the medical industry to be able to move into to vapes and so on what's the next steps so for us the immediate step is moving from preclinical trials to clinical trials to so start putting the device and the formulation in the hands of real patients in an environment that the medical community knows how to digest so the same protocols are doing for developing FDA drugs and in the same time, we're seeing now that out of almost 60 uh, formulations we test, the data that we're starting to get is significant. Yeah. I think the future is already here. It was right 10 times than you think you are right, the things that I cannot say. 
about FDA thing. I think there's going to be a very big expectation for the next coming future. Hold your, uh, hold your breath. Thanks. About two years ago, I saw a webinar with Saul Kay of Canatech, and I had no idea the intricacies of Israel and cannabis. In short, that kind of started my inspiration to see how to align Israeli companies, American companies, and uh, kind of bridge that gap, which, you know, if I was in the space, didn't know about, I assume there are many folks who had no idea about the intricacies of the Israeli cannabis industry. It's, I don't say comical, but people are still shooting in the dark and, and they'll say, oh, this is a great ratio for brain cancer. It's a four to one this. And, and they're basing it on very little data. And it's, it's better than no data. But as we have more of these smart technologies, whether it's smart vapes or understanding use cases that are linked to the cloud and using machine learning and to, to predict you know, where some of these formulations are going to be more beneficial, in the next couple of years, we're going to hopefully start to see some really large breakthroughs. Because again, we know that on a molecular level, cancer is being affected positively by some of these cannabinoids, uh, but we don't know exactly what ratio of secondary cannabinoids, what kind of terpene interactions are truly this entourage effect, or what's going to actually shrink X tumor versus Y tumor better, and it's learning. But. Cannabinoids are very complex molecules, yes. and there's still a lot of unknowns and, and different extraction processes and mm -hmm. techniques and different ways to actually consume it. So there, there are so many different verticals and variables that there is a lot of research that still needs to be done, but that will, as you say, pave the way for a better future for many. You come along with the right contact base, resources, so that you can connect people mm -hmm. uh, across the waters. Um, I assume a lot of the research and data that's being collated here, you're trying to get that published and distributed in the US and in the Western world so that they can take heed of the Israeli research and the results that they've come across and then help to the, you know, the industry internationally to, uh, to, to flourish. There are only around 30,000 plus uh, patients in Israel. So I'm looking forward to getting more of these phase one trials or pilot studies uh, in Israel and then leveraging that data to educate more folks in the US. We have a wide range of disease applications, ranging from uh, wound care, oncology support, women's health care, and others. And basically our concept was take a botanical material and create a better product using the advantages that are present in a natural product. Well, we did the same thing basically with cannabis. Cannabis is a plant with a huge amount of pharmacologic potency and benefit, whether it's psychoactive, or whether it's anti-inflammatory, or other diseases that may have an impact. Well, the first thing we needed to do was really change the way cannabis was extracted and prepared. Cannabis is smoked. There are not a lot of plants out there which are smoked. Safe for tobacco, I can't think of any. Sure. So what we did was we created a technology called the uh, VCT, which is vapor capture technology, where in a sense what we do is we combust or burn or vaporize the cannabis and use that to deliver that to the patient for various medical needs. And, and downstream, we're looking at various different products which we feel would optimize the benefits present in the cannabis plant. It's not a panacea. It's not a one plant is gonna solve all the problems of the world. But it can have impact on a lot of different indications. And that's what we're trying to do. It's also the integration with other uh, substances. Uh, I mean, the stories, uh, again, we, we don't have a huge amount of research, but stories of cancer beating uh, coconut oil mixed with uh, cannabinoids and things like yeah. that. There are other substances when they're combined together can bring out even enhancements to the I product. I totally agree, and I think that's a big benefit. Plus, it, it reacts well, it formulates well with other agents, so you're right. The sky's the limit, in a sense. If something has a mild effect and you combine it together with cannabis, you should get an additive benefit. There are natural cannabinoids that we get from other plant materials, is that right? That is true. That is true. In fact, we, today, we announced to the industry that we were actually able to extract CBD from hops. So it's not known to contain CBD, but since our extractor is so precise, we're able to tune it to CBD and it pulled out a significant amount of CBD from the hops plant, which creates a regulatory conundrum because CBD is illegal in Israel because it comes from cannabis. But now it doesn't. Hot CBD. <laughs> exactly. You have to call it HBD or something. It's CBD. <laughs> so there are three modules to the material. Number one, the vaporization unit. Okay. The cannabis gets loaded inside. The machine gets filled with a very rich plume of cannabinoids, terpenes, and other bioactives. It gets vacuum sucked over through here through the pumping system and into the solubilization unit. From down here, we'll fill it with the smoke coming in. 
And that dense cloud of material is filled with cannabinoids and terpenes and all the other bioactive agents. It's completely extracted. It's filling up the chamber here. And now we create what I like to call artificial rain. How are you, Johnny? Nice to meet you. Very good, thanks. Tell us a little bit about Civilized. Uh, Civilized is a North American-based uh, digital media company. We really are obsessed with putting our arms around the new and emerging cannabis consumers that are now coming out of the cannabis closet. People who are really enjoying cannabis uh, haven't felt comfortable identifying. That's changing, and it's changing because we're, we're adjusting the language. Other media uh, companies are adjusting uh, the language they use around cannabis, and people are, are really starting to feel comfortable. And we're fortunate now to be living in, a, in an age where social change actually and uh, you know this is a business issue but it's a social issue as well and the pace of social change is really really becoming much more rapid you look at, at, at gay marriage you look at all social issues things that we didn't think we would see in our lifetime yeah, we are seeing this change so I'm really bullish on where we're going I'll tell you about our story we wanted to get a little bit of a hit from a vaporizer but we didn't know how much to take and if you look at consumers nowadays, we want more and more information on what we're doing. People are wearing Fitbits to know how much they're walking. Same thing when it goes to the experiences that you have. We basically went heads down on the technology. And how could we create a technology that gives you the exact dosage metering of what you're consuming? And so what we've done is we've created um, a technology that has two sensors and a microchip, and we're measuring the amount of vapor that's being created and that you're inhaling into your body. And we're able to translate that into the amount of THC and CBD that you're, that you're taking. There's plenty of patients that are trying to consume cannabinoids in the right way, and in the inhalation of the vapor and the smoking, there is no way to measure any kind of quantity or uh, consistent dosage, so you know what you're taking. And then you want to have the data to know whether that was the right amount that you took, whether you should increase the dosage, decrease the dosage, and even when you get the dosage right, you want to be able to get it on a consistent basis. And that's exactly what this allows you to do. So, so it's taken us uh, two and a half years to develop the technology, because it's a very unique way. There's a lot of dosage that is being attempted where you measure the amount before you actually consume it. What we wanted to do is we wanted to have a convenient device that you could you know, easily put in your pocket, take with you, that carries on a vaporizing platform because it's such an easy and good experience, um, but to do it while you're in taking it. So it's happening just in time. And that had never been done. It was pretty difficult to figure out. And the device is disposable, right? It's like you don't need to refill it every time. It, once it's finished, it, it, you know, it, you chuck it away, right? So this is version one. It's a disposable version. Um, what we'll be working on is also one that's capsule-based and also one that has a Bluetooth uh, chip in here that can communicate with your smartphone. So that you can start to actually say on your smartphone, this is the desired result, I want to sleep better. And it'll communicate with your device and say, this is how much you need to take. Sounds all very fantastic. And I'm, I'm sure you have a very bright future ahead of you. We wish you the very best of luck with the show. Thanks. We have a really interesting regulatory system. The world is globalizing cannabis. It's a phenomenon that is happening everywhere and Tel Aviv is a microcosm, it's really accessible for everyone to come in. 40 different countries are represented, wow. uh, investors, educators, doctors, uh, scientists, patients. We present the whole spectrum. This is an industry that is coming out at a time where we have social media and we have data metrics and we have incredible companies that we've seen have worked in the regular space and how can we apply that tech to the cannabis space. Certainly we're in the fourth year now, you must have evolved and you must see a maturity that's coming now. Uh, the maturity of investment, the maturity of investors, suits, people who are serious about this industry, who are willing to invest hundreds of millions, is amazing. We also see though the early farmer, the person that wants to be in this industry, also has a place. This is a new industry, it can be inclusive. I often say, you know, the gas that's been mined just off the shores, we don't get to enjoy the benefits of it. Cannabis can bring those benefits, you know, in tax benefits, in medicine for people for free, and, and that's an amazing future. Daddy's lab is comprised of a collection of scientists. We have about 36 or 38 people in-house right now. We're based right outside of, inside of the, uh, the Technion in uh, biology faculty. And Daddy's Lab has been a part of the Technion for about three years now. We uh, have a huge variety of functions that we do, 
mainly from cell biology, creating databases with medical marijuana patients. We oversee about 1,200 patients that are using medical marijuana here in Israel. And we're just trying to figure out exactly why cannabis works the way it does and to see if we can optimize how cannabis works as a medicine. So Deddy's lab has been around for three years. I think one of the best things about walking into the lab though is that you know it's a good medicine and we've seen results in cell lines and with patients of 60% of apoptosis going on just by using cannabis. And if you can take away the, the pharmaceuticals or just the heavy drugs that are not only just hurting the system, that would be an amazing thing to incorporate some healing. Absolutely. I mean, you've got an opioid crisis going on in the States right now, and many are hooked on prescription drugs that have terrible side effects. We're certainly looking for alternatives and natural alternatives, and, and this is the groundbreaking research that people are looking for. So Israel has been the forefront of research for years, actually showing the rest of the world what they're missing out on as far as an actual efficacious medicine. Absolutely, I mean, cannabinoids were discovered here in Israel. Yeah, so, uh, right back in the 60s with Raphael Meshulam. Correct. The first one to isolate it. Correct. Yeah, correct. so Israel has a history with it almost. Correct, correct. A natural uh, connection there. And this has been a very, you know, the very country where they've had barren land and they've been able to work out uh, agriculturally how to grow things in deserts and areas where previously things were ungrowable so they've certainly got the right botanical skills and agricultural skills to do that and it, it, it really makes a lot of sense. I think so too. It certainly seems that cannabis has been wrongly accused and the data is stacking up to prove the case. With an emerging yet thriving industry it's no surprise that Israel is leading on research and innovation and all of the big players are here to get involved.